Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon to uh, those of you who are with us at the, uh, the conference room, as well as uh, uh, those of you who are watching uh, this conference uh, online as well. I believe there are uh, a bit more than 10 people who have uh, registered uh, to follow us online as well. Uh, this is our periodic uh, press conference uh, with regard to uh, the, the ongoing uh, novel co coronavirus uh, uh, disease crisis. And uh, we'd be more than happy to uh, uh, present you with all the information necessary, uh, as well as uh, answer uh, all the questions that you have for us as well. Uh, today, uh, uh, we have some handouts for you. Um, we have uh, sent them uh, online uh, by email to all the uh, viewers online. Uh, and uh, in case uh, you haven't received them, do let us know, and we will send you one as quickly as possible. Um, and. Uh, Today we have uh, uh, three other speakers uh, uh, with us. Uh, on my right hand side, uh, on my immediate right hand, right, right -hand side, uh, I have Mr. Uh, Kojima from the uh, Cabinet Secretary Secretariat. Mr. Kojima, Masaru Kojima, he is the uh, counselor uh, in charge of Coronavirus Disease 2019 Preparedness and Response. Uh, we also have, to his right, we have Mr. Sahara, uh, Yasuyuki Sahara, who is the uh, Senior Assistant Minister for Global Health, uh, Minister Secretariat at the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare. And uh, uh, to his right, we have one more person from the Ministry of Health, and, uh, Health Labor and Welfare, uh, and he is Mr. Umeda, Hiroshi Umeda, who is the Director of Infectious Disease Information Surveillance Office, uh, Tuberculosis and Inf uh, Infectious Disease Control Division Health Service Bureau at the uh, Ministry. Okay, without further ado, uh, perhaps uh, we should start with the uh, opening statement uh, from our, our main speakers. Perhaps uh, we can start with uh, Mr. Kojima. Mr. Kojima, you have the floor. Thank you very much. My name is Kojima. I'm from the Cabinet Secretariat. I would like to, at the outset, talk about um, what happened on the 4th of May. The Japanese uh, government, uh, which originally said that the declaration of emergency uh, status would go on until the 7th of uh, May, but that was extended to the 31st of uh, May. So I'd like to give you an outline of this. On the 7th of April, uh, the uh, declaration of emergency status uh, was made, and uh, it's almost been 20 days and uh, reducing uh, contact between people by 80%. Uh, that was the goal toward uh, eff which uh, efforts were made, and the citizens have made uh, great efforts. So uh, we'd like to express our gratitude uh, due to efforts on the part of everyone. Uh, we have not uh, seen an overshoot. Uh, we have been able to avoid that. So the daily uh, new uh, infection cases are now on the decline. We're able to manage that. And uh, the maximum was uh, beginning of uh, April where new infections uh, went to over 700 uh, per day. Uh, there was an increase of over 700 per day. Uh, but uh, recently, it's uh, under 200. Uh, yesterday's uh, data says 93, uh, so uh, new infections are on the decline, and that is the trend. And as uh, to the effective reproduction number, the R number, uh, the overall uh, uh, nation figure is zero, zero point, uh, 0.7 under 1. And so without uh, a lockdown, uh, we were able to uh, avoid uh, an overshoot, and uh, we're on the track uh, toward uh, containment. On the 4th of uh, May, the expert meeting uh, was held, and uh, uh, there was an analysis of the infection status, and uh, future recommendations uh, were made. And uh, they are, there are two of these. Uh, firstly, in Japan, we have not uh, gone to an overshoot uh, situation as in the uh, uh, other countries, and the R number is under one. We're seeing uh, certain uh, results, uh, but at the present point in time, uh, there's a considerable number of uh, new infections, and the reduction of infections is not adequate. That's the first point. And the other point is that uh, 
the uh, medical uh, uh, system is uh, still overstretched, uh, so the present approaches uh, need to be continued. And this is uh, the view of the experts. Based on uh, the views of the experts, on the 7th of uh, April, the emergency uh, status declaration uh, was made, uh, but this was extended to the 31st of uh, May. As uh, to the uh, areas, uh, uh, it, it will be all prefectures. It's all prefectures. Uh, so there's no change to the previous framework. It will be applied to all prefectures. However, on uh, with a view to doing so on the 14th of uh, May, uh, the expert uh, me, uh, so will be consulted once again, and the regional uh, infection uh, trends and uh, the uh, s strain on the medical system uh, will be analyzed in detail by the experts. And if the judgment is made that it's possible, without waiting for the 31st of May, uh, the emergency declaration will be lifted. Uh, there are 13 designated prefectures under specific uh, caution. And uh, with regard to these prefectures, uh, uh, we will be asking them to continue efforts to reduce contact by 80 percent. On the other hand, as for other prefectures, the other 34 prefectures, prevention of infection uh, increase uh, and uh, continuation of economic activities, uh, uh, we will consider both uh, to uh, take phased uh, steps. Up until now, for example, if there have been no uh, emergence of clusters, and with regard to facilities where the three C's can be avoided and with a thorough uh, prevention measures, uh, uh, there'll be a relaxation or lifting of uh, closures of uh, business, and that will be studied. Uh, for those uh, concerned, uh, for uh, prevention of spread, uh, 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 travel and uh, travel across uh, prefectures or unnecessary uh, transfers, uh, we will ask, be asking them uh, to uh, uh, control that. And uh, uh, this is a stage of preparation for the next step. That is what we consider this phase to be. Uh, so, uh, bearing in mind that this may be a, uh, a long-term uh, situation, we've had uh, proposals with regard to new lifestyles, uh, various commercial facilities, restaurants uh, operations, and small-size uh, event uh, operation. With the, re uh, the consideration of this new lifestyles, uh, uh, taking full uh, measures to prevent uh, infection, we hope that uh, activities uh, will be uh, resumed, uh, taking all of these into considered. Depend we will have experts uh, to uh, collaborate, uh, to uh, create uh, uh, guidelines uh, for prevention of infections uh, for each of the uh, bus uh, business uh, types. And uh, the uh, approaches uh, which we have taken in Tokyo have produced uh, sure results. So we would like to uh, ask for continued cooperation. That is all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Ma, uh, which of the, the handouts uh, would be relevant to your, your presentation just now? Uh, the document that's titled uh, Summary uh, the summary of the Basic Policies, please refer to this uh, material. Uh, now I would like to uh, give the floor to the uh, Ministry of Health, Welfare uh, and Labor. Um, perhaps uh, Mr. Sahara will be uh, giving the, the statement. You have the floor. Hi. Yes. My name is Sahara from MHLW. Thank you for your attendance. At your hand, uh, distributed is a copy of uh, the material titled Updates on COVID-19 in Japan. Please refer to this material as I speak. And this shows the status of infections, uh, the testing uh, systems and infrastructure. That is what I would like to explain. If you could please uh, turn to this page. This shows the latest status as is shown on top right. This shows uh, the status as of yesterday. Please take a look at the total at the bottom. PCR positive. Sixteen thousand two hundred and nineteen uh, compared to the day before, increase of ninety five. And those who are 
those who are hospitalized, 11,442, decline of 339. Those who have uh, been discharged from hospitals, 6,557. And the number of deaths, unfortunately, 570, an increase of uh, six uh, compared to the previous day. If you could please uh, turn to the next page. This shows the number of confirmed uh, cases whose uh, tests are positive. As Mr. Kojima said, in early April there was a peak, and now the number is on the decline. With uh, support for many uh, people, we're now seeing the number dropping. Please take a look at the next page. Uh, this is uh, by age group. Uh, the trend has not changed very much. You can see that uh, uh, there is a large number of uh, young people who are tested uh, positive, who have tested positive. The next page. This is the number of uh, death by age, or the number of severe cases by age. I think this is common throughout the world. Those who are elderly are seeing uh, the largest number of death. There are those uh, who have suffered severe symptoms are having greater numbers of death, and uh, relatively less uh, death uh, among the younger generation. Please uh, take a look at the next page. Overall, uh, the number of infections, the number of patients who have been infected, on a day-to-day -day basis, the number is declining. At one point, uh, hospitals uh, were very overburdened. In some regions, uh, uh, the tough situation still continues. Please take a look at the left-hand side graph. Uh, this shows the number of patients requiring mechanical ventilators. Uh, this is a plot of uh, those uh, numbers on a specific date. And uh, the peak was uh, toward the end of April, and it's improving gradually. On the right is a graph uh, showing the number of patients uh, who are on ECMO. There's a slight decline in the number. But then, of course, uh, we have to continue to closely monitor this situation going forward. Moving on to the next page. Uh, this is a comparison of Japan versus other countries. Uh, this shows the number of deaths uh, as of April 4th. And the number of deaths uh, per 100,000 people, how Japan compares with other countries. Fortunately, the number of deaths in this country is very small. And it's desirable that uh, we sustain this uh, trend. Next on PCR testing. Please refer to the next page. Uh, this is something that we show every time. Red uh, represents the testing capacity per day, and green, or Rather, blue, blue line graph shows the actual number of tests performed. The test uh, capacity, the testing capacity, uh, is gradually improving, and it's uh, now close to eighteen thousand tests. Uh, the number of uh, actual tests performed has not reached uh, the overall capacity. It's hovering uh, uh, between 7,000 to 8,000. Uh, there are some ups and downs, waves, and uh, 
That's because on the weekends, the number of tests uh, performed uh, becomes uh, less, and reports uh, are sometimes uh, delayed with a time lag. If you could please uh, take a look at the next slide. Uh, this is the number of PCR tests conducted in each country and region. Comparison among countries. Orange bars uh, show uh, the number of tests uh, per 100,000 people, as is always uh, pointed out. The number of tests performed in this country uh, compared to other countries plotted here is uh, quite small and limited. And it's pointed out that uh, this may be a challenge. But uh, for that, please uh, refer to the next page. This shows the PCR test positive rate in each country and region. So uh, the rate of uh, positive findings if we compare Japan with other countries, uh, the rate is uh, lower in this country. If uh, this rate is high, then there may be a challenge. But uh, the rate of those found positive is low in Japan. So I believe that the testing infrastructure and the framework is working. And it's not that we're missing a large number of people who are supposed to be on test. That is not the case. And moving on to page 11. Uh, the bar graph uh, shows uh, the number of PCR tests uh, conducted. And the line graph shows uh, the rate of those found positive. Uh, the rate of uh, there's a positive uh, in early April when the declaration of uh, the state of emergency was issued. It was very high, but you can see that this rate is coming down as uh, testing infrastructure is uh, developed and improved. Uh, the number of uh, patients uh, has declined, and that is in the background of this from what we can see. Now going forward, well, so far with respect to PCR tests, uh, we targeted uh, mainly severe uh, patients uh, for PCR testing so that we will not miss those uh, severe cases. Uh, and the number of uh, infections uh, has risen since uh, the beginning of April, but now of late, more recently, the number has come down. And PCR testing capacity and infrastructure, because we do not know what the situation will be in the future, we believe that we need to continue to strengthen uh, the capacity and the framework. Um, responses and actions for that are described on the next page. Uh, this is based uh, on the recommendations uh, made by the experts uh, group. There are six of them. One is to strengthen the system of public health uh, centers and local public health uh, institutes and reduce uh, the work burden. Second, with respect to the testing infrastructure, uh, we need to increase uh, coordinating uh, functions between and among uh, prefectures. Uh, testing capacity needs to be arranged and coordinated uh, uh, within the prefecture, and uh, I think we need uh, to facilitate that and improve it. Number three. Establishment of regional outpatient inspection centers at the end of March, early April. From that point in time, in various regions, 
uh, we are introducing new methods of uh, testing. Uh, until that point, uh, tests were conducted only within hospitals, but uh, outside hospitals, uh, tests uh, have started to be commissioned to uh, local medical associations. Tests are performed for those uh, who are judged uh, uh, to be necessary uh, by their doctors. And uh, we have been introducing uh, these regional outpatient inspection centers. We need to reinforce that. Number four, with respect to PPE, sample collection kits, and testing kits, uh, we need to secure them. In February and March, there were challenges uh, with respect to this. So we need to continue uh, weather measures to improve this. Number five. Uh, training for sample collectors, and uh, we also need to ensure the quality of PCR testing. We need to continue working on this. Number six, we need to grasp the status regarding the PCR uh, testing systems. Uh, we need to uh, continue to closely monitor uh, the rate of uh, those tested positive. Uh, we need to disclose that information to the general public. Uh, and these are the recommendations that we have received from the experts. And uh, as uh, MHLW, we would like to continue working on these. And uh, two more pages. So on top of uh, PCR tests, uh, we are developing an antigen uh, test. Unlike a PCR, which takes hours, uh, uh, to get the findings. Uh, it takes much uh, shorter time. It takes only 20 to 30 minutes uh, time uh, to test uh, uh, on the spot at hospitals. And so uh, the test results can be delivered uh, much more quickly. PCR tests were performed uh, for those who were deemed necessary. But once we have this antigen test, uh, people uh, who test uh, positive uh, will have that information uh, and uh, uh, will be found to be positive. Uh, but those who test uh, negative uh, PCR testing can be uh, performed on top of that uh, so that we can increase efficiencies in performing PCR testing going forward. Uh, two more slides. If you could please uh, take a look at the next slide. Uh, this uh, just shows uh, the image of the outlook that we have uh, for novel coronavirus disease uh, control measures. Uh, this was uh, suggested by the experts group. Uh, there's a big uh, peak. Uh, on the left-hand side of the graph. And uh, we have uh, just started uh, to peak out, and uh, uh, we're on the right-hand side of the slope. With request uh, for thorough behavioral modification, we would like to uh, drastically contain the number of uh, new infections. That is what we're working on currently. You can see that the curve uh, goes down. And uh, with the spread of uh, the new life uh, style, and uh, with uh, this uh, new lifestyle maintained, uh, we would like uh, to contain the number of new infections. What is necessary during this period is, uh, as is uh, stated at the top, uh, we need to observe the new lifestyle. As uh, Mr. Kojima said, uh, we will take a number of measures, social distancing, uh, ensured telework to be promoted, and these are the measures necessary. Now, during this period, we all need to observe this. Right below where it says new lifestyle, we need to expand the capacity 
uh, for the healthcare system. Uh, if there's going to be another peak in the future, so that we will be able to respond to that adequately, uh, we need to increase the capacity. And uh, as is uh, shown below, uh, we need uh, to increase uh, counter cluster measures. And uh, we don't know what the future holds, but if there's going to be another wave of infections, uh, we will make a request for thorough behavior modification. This uh, could be the case. And on the right-hand side, what is important at any rate is to uh, develop a framework uh, in which early diagnosis uh, can be delivered and to develop uh, treatment methods uh, to prevent uh, severe uh, cases from happening. Remdesivir, a new drug uh, was approved uh, yesterday and it's uh, now to be used. Uh, and Avigan will be approved. Uh, uh, Avigan is approved and it's uh, now being tested in clinical studies. So try to introduce these drugs as early as possible and uh, continue with the development of vaccines. So in the overall picture of what's to happen in the future, we need to continue these measures and activities. The last slide. This is the future policy for novel coronavirus disease control. For one, one of the major points here is behavioral modification. I may be repeating, but uh, the focus is on new lifestyle and counter cluster measures. Uh, need to be carried out uh, even more effectively. And uh, we need to provide full support to local health uh, centers. And we should uh, look uh, to leverage ICT so that we can perform contact uh, tracing better. And uh, uh, to reinforce uh, the healthcare system, the medical system, and development of uh, treatments, uh, we need to continue making and no out effort at all of these. Of course, uh, the number of infections, how will it evolve? Uh, we do not know yet at this moment, so we have to be very careful. We all have to uh, play a role in responding to this. In the future, uh, these are the measures we believe are necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sahar. And, uh I hope uh, all the viewers will be able to uh, look into the uh, material, the, the handouts uh, that uh, Mr. Sahara used as well. They contain uh, uh, quite a number of interesting figures, uh, useful figures as well. I think one of the points he made was uh, the expansion of the, uh, the uh, PCR testing and other, other types of testing as well. Uh, one thing that has been said in the last a couple of days, and which was announced by uh, the uh, by by Minister Kato, uh, was the uh, the rough guideline uh, for PCR testing. In Japanese, we call it the measu. Some people uh, translate it as uh, as a guideline or criteria, but I think it's uh, it's more of a rough guideline. So it's uh, there's a lot of flexibility. Uh, uh, doctors do not have to stick. Uh, to this uh, rough guideline. Uh, ultimately, it will depend on the doctor's uh, decision whether uh, the, the patient uh, or the person should be uh, taking PCR tests or not. Uh, and, there, uh, and we are reviewing uh, this rough guideline as well. Uh, Sarasan, is there uh, anything to add uh, on, this, uh, on this point? Thank you very much. The point uh, that was just made, I think, uh, needs to be divided into two aspects. Uh, the first aspect being 
what the doctors do, uh, what the kind of patients uh, will uh, the doctors uh, conduct PCR tests uh, on. Uh, since the beginning of March, uh, it was already said that this is to be left up to the doctor's uh, decision. So that was the case uh, since uh, the beginning of uh, March. And the other point is uh, to the outpatient, what kind of uh, people should go to the outpatient uh, uh, clinic for those that have contacts? Uh, for uh, returnees and uh, potential contacts uh, consultation centers. What kind of people should go there? Uh, this would be a, a guideline, uh, a rough guideline for this. Uh, presently, 37.5 uh, degrees centigrade. Uh, if uh, this uh, fever lasts for four days, uh, this uh, would be the criteria. That's the present uh, situation. It's just one rough uh, guideline. Uh, if there are underlying conditions or uh, if uh, the person uh, is uh, suffering, uh, we encourage people to consult uh, uh, regardless of this criteria. And the centers uh, say that the, they, people do not have to uh, stick to the criteria and uh, that they would refer them to doctors. Uh, what is going on the ground oh, is uh, such that uh, in some places they try uh, too hard to stick to the criteria and it's hard to be subjected to tests. Uh, we hear voices to this effect. So uh, the rough guidelines with more flexibility is uh, something uh, that uh, we are studying and we're in the process of studying more flexible guidelines. And at an earlier point in time, uh, so people can be uh, given tests uh, that is uh, the earlier stage of symptom symptoms uh, so that people can be subjected to tests. Uh, we're exploring possibilities for enabling that. What kind of uh, criteria, what kind of wording uh, would be the best? Uh, we need some time to work this out, but uh, we would like to indicate uh, at some point in time. In a shell, the uh, to uh, promote the uh, the the uh, the actual PCR testing uh, amongst our people as well, and we will be taking all sorts of different measures uh, to make this happen, as we have been uh, for the past uh, uh, month or two as well. Uh, now, uh, uh, now that the uh, the opening remarks are, are have been uh, completed, I would now now like to uh, open the floor uh, to uh, questions. And I just realized that I hadn't uh, introduced myself properly. My name is Masato. I'm the uh, press secretary of the foreign uh, ministry, and uh, I'm happy to uh, to be able to uh, to uh, convey uh, all the uh, important information to uh, to the foreign correspondents in, in Tokyo. Uh, perhaps I should uh, uh, open uh, the floor to those of you who are at the conference uh, right now. Any questions that you would like to uh, pose? Yes. Okay. The lady at the front. My name is Nishimura from Radio France, a correspondent. I have uh, several questions regarding PCR tests. In the material, it says that uh, uh, this is the number of uh, PCR tests uh, conducted. Those uh, who are hospitalized uh, because of the infection, are they tested and are those numbers also included? If so, How can we see the breakdown? How can we see that number? That's my first question. And I would also like to ask uh, how you calculate uh, the rate of uh, positives. Uh, the definition of uh, positive testing uh, differs from one country to another. Here in Japan, how does MHLW calculate uh, the number of uh, those found positive? And antigen tests. At the end of uh, last month, I understand the government conducted a very small trial or test. Uh, have the results come out? I have not uh, confirmed uh, all of that, but uh, if the results uh, are out, uh, how can we uh, get the results? How can we see the results? Three good questions are for the uh, Ministry of Health, uh, Labor and Welfare. Um, 
Are the, uh, the questions clear uh, yes. for you, Sarasan? Okay. Please bear with us for a moment. With respect to the numbers, those who are hospitalized, well, sometimes uh, the number of tests uh, include uh, tests performed on those who are hospitalized. Well, the question perhaps is uh, not just uh, at the time of admission testing is performed, but uh, testing uh, is uh, conducted uh, second time, third uh, time round uh, while they're being uh, hospitalized. And are those numbers included was the question, I believe. Uh, we look at both uh, statistics. Uh, we uh, take a look at the total number of tests performed, and we also look at the number of patients. Uh, two tests may be conducted uh, for one person, and sometimes that is counted as just one test. Uh, we have both uh, statistics. According to uh, this material, if you could please take a look at page three. Uh, this says the trend of uh, the number of uh, confirmed uh, cases. This shows the number of persons, the number of patients. This is not the total number of tests. Uh, this shows the number of persons who have received tests. Page 9, uh, this shows uh, comparison amongst uh, several countries. This shows the total number of tests, the number of tests performed. So uh, for each country, what does the number represent? What numbers are collected? It is different from one country to another, and that may be a challenge. I wish to confirm the following. Right over here, the number shown here uh, includes uh, those uh, who are hospitalized or those staying at hotels uh, who have uh, been uh, subjected to tests second and third times, and that's included. If that's the case, uh, the more you see an increase in infected persons, number of infected persons, the test number would automatically go up. Uh, the second and third tests uh, would uh, lead to an increase in the number. Now, the new tests uh, may be flat or um, even decline uh, in terms of possibility. Uh, would that not happen? The red page 8, what is you see on page 8, that's the total uh, number. And it's exactly as you've said. And so, therefore, the second test would be included. Tests such as the second test would be included. And so that includes all the tests. And as you pointed out, if you subtract uh, the second number, if you're looking at just the initial test, uh, the number would be smaller. And it's exactly as you've mentioned. Uh, on the Japanese uh, version of uh, our ministry's uh, website, uh, we show uh, this uh, graph, uh, and it's based on the number of persons per day. How many persons have received PCR tests? Uh, how many of them tested positive? We show that every day on our website in Japanese. So. For that particular day, what is the number of newly infected uh, people? You will be able to follow that number by look, taking a look at our website. On the positive rate, 
basically the number of uh, tests performed uh, would be the denominator. And uh, those who have turned positive uh, would be the numerator. And the last question uh, that you raised on uh, antibody uh, tests, uh, uh, the antigen tests, rather, or, or the antibody uh, tests we are in the process of doing at the moment. And so we will show you the results uh, going forward, the antibody tests. Okay, thank you so much. Are questions uh, from the floor? Okay, uh, Rocky san Thank you very much. Rocky Swift at Reuters. L last night the news came out that remdesivir was approved uh, for use in Japan. That would be the first one approved in the U.S. and Japan, I think, anywhere in the world. Is there any more clarity on when those supplies of that drug might come to Japan? And uh, a related question, you, uh, Sahara-san, you mentioned um, Avigan. I think you said that that drug has been approved, but to my knowledge, it is expected to be approved by the end of the, this month. At least that's what uh, Prime Minister Abe has said. So if you could clarify on that. And, and, and additionally, is there any expectation for when Avigan might be approved similarly uh, in the United States and other countries, seeing as remdesivir was uh, speeded through the process so quickly in Japan? Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. We actually have a, a similar question uh, coming from uh, Isabel Reynolds of, of Bloomberg, uh, which states, uh, can you explain the reasoning behind the uh, rapid approval of remdesivir as well? So uh, in uh, giving us the update on remdesivir, uh, could you also cover this point as well? Yes, thank you for your question. First, uh, regarding uh, remdesivir, uh, we had a special approval for this drug. Well, special approval is such that it's different from ordinary approval that we give uh, to drugs. Uh, this was especially approved. More specifically, there were three conditions or three ideas behind this. One is in order to prevent the spread of uh, the infection, uh, we needed the drug to be used uh, in emergencies. And I think that condition is met. Uh, we need urgent use of the drug. Second, other than this particular drug, uh, there were no other appropriate uh, measures we can take to treat the disease. It's not that there are other drugs that are available that can be used for the disease. Uh, this uh, is the only drug uh, so far. And number three? In overseas, uh, the drug uh, must be approved. In the case of remdesivir, it was approved by the FDA. So given these conditions, special approval was given. And uh, uh, the target population is uh, severe cases, severe patients, severe uh, patients who require mechanical ventilation uh, will be put on this drug, remdesivir, is a uh, clinician-led uh, uh, trial. It was a joint trial between Japan and the U.S. Uh, that's been conducted, and given that as well, we decided to give uh, special approval to this drug. And regarding Avigan, I don't think I specifically said that it was approved already. Uh, for its approval, clinical trial is being conducted. That is where we are right now. 
at the earliest possible stage. We would like to see the clinical trial concluded so that we can have a review of uh, the submission to confirm that it's safe and effective. And if that is the finding, then uh, we would like uh, to give approval so that it can be supplied to the hospitals quickly. What is important here is uh, to uh, collect the evidence for that. And uh, for that, various medical institutions uh, are involved and uh, are working on this. And uh, remdesivir, when will the supply start? When can it be used? At this moment, we don't have a specific uh, time schedule yet, but uh, remdesivir uh, already uh, had a clinical trial, so it's been used on some patients already. Post-approval, when can it be made available? Uh, the date is not set, so let me refrain from answering that. The timeline has not been set yet. And s sorry, Avigan? Actually, it's approved as a drug already with uh, the indication for a new type of uh, influenza. A clinical trial is conducted with this uh, drug, and that is to expand the indication so that it can also cover the novel coronavirus. So that is uh, what is being done. Okay, thank you so much. I think uh, the, the point was uh, for Ravigan, uh, it will have to go through rigorous uh, evidence-based uh, uh, examination. And uh, after all that, then we will know uh, how uh, this uh, new drug uh, will be treated in Japan as well. Okay, uh, we have uh, uh, If I may, uh, the use of Avigan in the United States or the uh, prospect for approval in the United States of Avigan, uh, we can't say anything about it. But uh, as a fact, uh, Avigan has already, uh, under approval of FDA, uh, has uh, started clinical uh, trials uh, with FDA approval. And so therefore, there are many patients uh, where Avigan is used. Uh, and if the data uh, is in place at an early point in time, uh, very smoothly, uh, smooth pharmaceutical approval uh, should be uh, coming. Um, well, uh, a number of questions from the online viewers as well. So uh, perhaps uh, I should uh, introduce, uh, I should uh, 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 use these questions. Uh, we have some questions coming from uh, Mr. Patrick Welter of Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. Uh, the first question is, uh, this is prob probably from Mr. Kojima. What are the uh, criteria by the national government for, the lifting, for lifting the state of emergency? And why don't, why don't the government give some concrete nu numerical criteria for lifting the state of emergency? Thank you for the question. The criteria for lifting the state of emergency. At this moment, we cover the whole of the country. All 47 prefectures are now under a state of emergency. Going forward, if we are to lift that, it will be region by region. Uh, should uh, it be lifted uh, for the prefecture, uh, for the region, that will be a regional discussion and decision to be made. Well, then specifically, which prefectures uh, could lift the state of emergency? Uh, the criteria for that are now being uh, debated in terms of the thinking behind that, for one thing. The status of infections. Uh, what is the status of infections in that particular prefecture? For example, 
in the last two weeks or three weeks, uh, what's been the number of new infections in that uh, region or prefecture? Uh, what is the proportion of uh, cases uh, where the routes of infections are unknown, untraceable, uh, or the status of infections in the adjacent prefectures, adjacent regions? Uh, overall, consideration will have to be made, uh, taking into consideration such factors. And the uh, system of uh, healthcare, healthcare system, how will it, how well uh, is it established? How well can the system accommodate uh, the patients? So those uh, uh, two factors will have to be looked at uh, intensely. Can the prefecture handle a number of uh, severe cases? At any rate, it will have to be evaluated by experts and an overall consideration will be made taking into account a number of factors, as I said. And in terms of the time schedule, a 14th of May, that's next week. On the 14th of this month, experts uh, will meet, and uh, at that point in time, for each prefecture, the trends of the number of new infections will be looked at. Uh, uh, healthcare delivery system uh, will also be evaluated in detail by the experts, and if possible, uh, before the end of uh, May, uh, the state of emergency could be lifted in some prefectures, possibly. At any rate, as experts uh, evaluate the data and consider criteria, uh, they are saying that uh, they would like to take uh, a look at the data up until the 14th. So based on the input from the experts, uh, we hope that uh, quick decisions can be made on that. Another question we have from uh, Mr. Welcher is uh, when and under what conditions will Japan lift the restrictions to travel to Japan? Uh, we also have a similar question coming from uh, Isabel Reynolds of Bloomberg once again. Uh, can you explain the re uh, uh, what discussions are you having about when and how foreign travel uh, can be resumed? Uh, Kojima-san, can you take this question or should I answer this? I think uh, the uh, the travel ban itself uh, is uh, is a uh, is a uh, is a all government uh, effort, and uh, one relevant uh, uh, factor uh, for this uh, travel uh, restriction is the uh, travel advisory uh, issued by the uh, foreign ministry as well. Uh, we have uh, currently over uh, close to 90 countries uh, at uh, level three. And these are countries, indeed, who we, uh, that we need to uh, uh, look at very carefully uh, for the Japanese people to travel into. Uh, but based on that, uh, the relevant ministries, including the Ministry of Justice, the Ministry of uh, Health, uh, uh, Labor and Welfare, and uh, some other ministries will uh, look into uh, what should be done uh, uh, under their jurisdiction, including uh, passport control, uh, uh, or, or uh, for the foreign ministry would be uh, whether visa, visa should be uh, given or be uh, valid or not, and uh, whether people traveling into Japan uh, should be uh, properly tested uh, uh, health-wise, uh, so, and so forth. So it's, a, it's an all-government uh, uh, decision, uh, but as of date, um, uh, we have not seen any uh, changes or uh, relaxing in the uh, travel advisory that I referred to, uh, but we will be responsive to uh, how things are uh, in the other countries, and uh, how the uh, co uh, novel coronavirus is, uh, is becoming uh, uh, more or less under control or not. And uh, based on that, we'll make some judgments. Uh, at this point in time, uh, it would be difficult for us to, uh, to say uh, when uh, 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 that will happen, uh, but we are, are certainly vigilant as to uh, what is happening around the world as well. And eventually it will uh, depend on how things are in Japan as well. If things are more or less under control in Japan, uh, uh, we will look into this matter uh, uh, as such. Uh, another uh, question uh, coming from uh, Isabel Renders the, of Bloomberg is, uh, uh, I think this is probably for the Ministry of Health uh, uh, labor and welfare. Uh, officials said in earlier briefings that you are finding 80% of those infected do not infect anyone else. Is this still the case?
はいあのそれは。Yes. As you said,、uh, that sounds、uh, true、uh, from what we、uh, see. Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sahara. Anything to add? The 80%、uh, not being infected is、uh, data from February. MHLW. Has a cluster team, and、uh, we're very actively、uh, doing contact tracing. And this、uh, approach was taken not only in February, but in March and in April.、Uh, we have continued this. And、uh, in、uh, continuing these approaches, We have not changed our way of、uh, thinking throughout the process. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we have some more que、uh, questions coming from other viewers online. Uh, we have uh, uh, a question from、uh, Mr. Alistair Gale of the Wall Street Journal.、Uh, his question is Can you explain how Iwate Prefecture, Iwate Prefecture alone, has managed To have zero reported、uh, COVID 19 infections. Is this because of the very low level of testing there? So, could I ask、uh, the Ministry of Health,、uh, Labor, and Welfare to、uh, address this question? はいえーとま、yes.、Uh, I was taking a look at the data just now. With respect to Iwate Prefecture, between March 25th to May 6th, during this period, the number of PCR tests performed was 263. 263 tests are performed in Iwate during this period. So, this was the number of tests conducted. None found positive in these tests. Why? It's difficult to say why or explain why. Most probably, people in Iwate Prefecture are taking these measures very seriously. They're implementing these measures very seriously. They Are not urban centers. So perhaps、uh, social distancing、uh, is effective. Well, there must be a number of、uh, factors, although it's difficult to explain. Okay,、uh, we have、uh, questions coming from Simon Denier、uh, of、uh, Washington Post.、Uh, actually, two questions. One is, Data from the National Institute of Infectious Diseases shows a significant number of excess deaths due to respiratory tract infections in Tokyo in March. Given that the flu season ended early this year, how do you explain these deaths? Could they be diagnosed COVID 19 deaths? Health? Okay, I will repeat. Data from the National Institute of Infectious Diseases shows a significant number of excess deaths due to respiratory tract infections in Tokyo in March. Given that the flu season ended early this year, how do you explain these deaths? Could they be diagnosed、uh, COVID 19 deaths?
Hi. Ano? Yes. Uh, my name is uh, Umeda uh, from the uh, Health uh, uh, Bureau, uh, the Health Service Bureau of MHLW. As uh, you said in the question, uh, the influenza season from uh, December to March, death uh, due to influenza. Uh, we've done uh, surveillance uh, to uh, for speedy uh, process, and uh, in large uh, cities in Japan, 21 uh, large cities, uh, we've done the surveillance. So uh, when we do the survey and uh, the uh, infection route is on the website, in one city as a whole, uh, if we look at uh, the results, uh, the excess uh, death uh, was not seen uh, this season. On the other hand, uh, if we look at the respective uh, cities, Uh, there are fluctuations, up and ups and downs in the data. Uh, temporarily, we can see an excess uh, death situation. And uh, this is seen in a multiple number of cities. But uh, in, if we focus on Tokyo, in the case of Tokyo, uh, the 23 wards, we've collected data from these wards to see if there's excess uh, death uh, situation or not. And if we look at the data from the 23 wards, as stated in the question, in uh, February and in March, uh, we've seen excess uh, death. And that is shown on the graph. And uh, as you pointed out, uh, this uh, season uh, was such that the influenza uh, was uh, very small uh, in number. Cases of influenza was very small. Uh, despite that, we're seeing uh, excess death situation. And your question is as, as to why, what caused this. And uh, for our part, uh, we've uh, done uh, some work for confirmation. Uh, there was very small number of influenza this uh, season. And as for data which is counted, among those died, uh, pneumonia, uh, that is uh, including uh, aspirational uh, pneumonia and also uh, pneumonia uh, due to bacteria. Uh, we've uh, uh, counted deaths uh, due to this. The number was such that uh, if we look at the season starting in December, from that point in time, uh, there was a small number of influenza cases, uh, but uh, deaths due to pneumonia during this time was on the decline. That was uh, the actual situation. And as, why uh, do we see an excess death situation in, in, despite the small number? Now, uh, for one thing, uh, the baseline, the past uh, 30 years of cases where influenza uh, was not very uh, widely spread, uh, the past uh, 30 years of uh, pneumonia and influenza uh, death cases, uh, statistically, uh, was uh, calculated uh, uh, so that uh, it's a 95 percent uh, uh, confidence uh, level. And uh, we're seeing uh, uh, a uh, tendency or a uh, trend uh, along this baseline. From the latter part of uh, February to uh, March, including uh, Tokyo, uh, uh, this is seen in other cities, but we're seeing uh, the general trend is uh, toward a uh, decline. On the other hand, uh, the excess death rate uh, was that while the baseline was going down, uh, there are uh, reports from uh, public health centers in the 23 wards. And during this time, uh, there was only a small number of reports uh, from these public health centers. The number itself is uh, small, but uh, the reports are per public uh, health center. 
even if the number doesn't change much, you know, it's, it's very difficult to explain this, but if uh, there are only a few number of public health centers reporting, uh, because the reports are small, uh, the number of uh, reports are small, we need to make adjustments uh, uh, for the 23 wards if there's only a small number of reports that are being uh, filed. And uh, we uh, provide estimates uh, based on uh, adjustments. And that's the surveillance model. And if we use this estimate, the estimate uh, figure doesn't change much. Uh, but uh, because uh, also due to the fact that the baseline goes down, uh, there's an excess uh, compared to the uh, upper uh, limit of the baseline. And uh, so that is why uh, we're seeing uh, this result of excess uh, mortality. Uh, the excess uh, mortality Uh, if when we see uh, this uh, trend, uh, this surveillance uh, would react, uh, enable us to react very quickly, and uh, we would evaluate uh, with experts. The actual number has gone down this year, and uh, there were only a few number of public health centers reporting. So, in if you just look at the numbers, we're seeing some excess of situation. So that's the case. Uh, it's not that uh, this year uh, there are more deaths due to pneumonia. That is not uh, the case. Uh, we are not seeing such a situation. That is how we evaluate uh, the present situation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, another question coming from uh, Simon Denier uh, is uh, as follows. Uh, Kobe City General Hospital uh, surveyed 1,000... Uh, 1, outpatients in the first week of April and found 33, or 3.3%, had antibodies for COVID-19. This would represent an in infection rate for Japan 300 times higher than the official figures show. Uh, how do you react to that study? Thank you for the question. First of all, with respect to antibody testing, as uh, is said by the WHO, uh, the testing system itself is not yet well established, and there's uh, so room for interpretation. There's uh, a lot of debate on that. So. Kobe City Hospital number is something that we would like to uh, take a look at uh, as one of the numbers, but we are conducting various surveys and investigations. And so uh, we have uh, to look at uh, this number from an overall point of view to put it in perspective. Uh, if uh, the number of infections is uh, 300 times uh, the official uh, data. Uh, we would see a much larger number of uh, new patients, but that is not the case. Uh, so we have to think. Antibody testing results have to be looked at, uh, uh, taking into consideration a number of uh, factors. And uh, so we should not just uh, focus on one test. Uh, we need to take an overall a look. This is a that uh, that uh, uh, attracts uh, some attention, but uh, the fact is that there's a sampling. The size of sampling is a bit limited, and I think it would be interesting to see a Kobe City General Hospital actually perform its second or third uh, surveys as such and see uh, how things have changed uh, over time. I think it's been a while since the first week, week of April, and I think it would be interesting for, for, for everybody concerned to see uh, how the figures uh, actually change uh, over time. Okay, uh, we have uh, some questions coming from uh, Motoko Rich of New York Times, and I think the first one uh, perhaps uh, should be addressed by uh, Mr. Kojima. 
The question is, when the state of emergency is lifted, how will you guarantee compliance with a new lifestyle? Uh, this, this new lifestyle that was suggested, uh, proposed by the, uh, the group of experts on the 4th of May. Thank you for the question. The uh, expert uh, meeting uh, that met recently uh, uh, proposed uh, the new lifestyle. That is uh, to contain uh, the expansion of the inspection. At the same time, social and economic activities uh, to gradually uh, resume this uh, uh, this uh, sort of uh, new uh, lifestyle uh, must be thorough, and it needs to take root, and uh, that is the thinking. It's not that we can say people should do this and that. It's not something that we impose on people. It's for the citizens to uh, unite. Uh, to uh, save lives and our livelihood, uh, to muster their wisdom, and to do thorough, uh, be thorough in their digitalization and uh, conduct, uh, conducting smart lives. It's uh, for each and every citizen, and, and we need uh, their cooperation. And uh, fortunately, uh, the Japan's uh, Special Measures Law Framework is a very loose uh, framework. But uh, we've had cooperation from the citizens, and we have come this far. We've been able to uh, prevent uh, an overshoot, and we've been able to uh, contain the situations uh, to the present level. Uh, so uh, with cooperation from the Japanese citizens and with uh, their understanding, uh, we have uh, seen uh, them uh, conduct a behavioral change and modification. And we should uh, continue that. And uh, that is necessary. It's necessary that this be continued. And uh, naturally, uh, for the new uh, lifestyle, uh, the government would be calling on people to wear masks or to uh, wash their hands or to avoid the three Cs. Uh, we'll do uh, uh, public uh, relations and in providing of information on the part of the government. Uh, internet videos and posters. Uh, we will be uh, leveraging various uh, forms of media uh, to appeal to the general public about the need for behavioral change. And uh, teleworking and staggered uh, commuting, uh, uh, we've uh, requested uh, economic uh, organizations uh, on these points. And uh, industrial associations for each of the in industrial associations and type of industry and uh, type of uh, facility. Uh, uh, we have been asking them to form uh, guidelines for prevention of infections. So in various uh, forms, uh, we uh, hope that, that the uh, new lifestyle will take root. And we're making requests to this effect. Uh, we uh, receive, continue to receive cooperation from the citizens. OK. Uh, and uh, in this relation, uh, we have uh, a few more questions uh, from uh, Motoko Rich, as well as uh, uh, Walter Sim uh, of of live uh, of mm, Straight of, of straight times. Um, one of the questions is uh, about universal mask wearing, uh, which is one of the things included in the uh, new lifestyle. Will the Japanese government be recommending recommending universal mask wearing when people go outside indefinitely? Thank you for the question. Indefinitely, uh, I'm not sure, but I think uh, there was a page uh, from MHW's uh, presentation earlier that I can point to. There's an illustration. This is the page that I'm referring to. Yes, this is the page. 
as was mentioned earlier, we really don't know about the future, but the number of infections may rise or decline, and uh, for a certain period of time, uh, that will repeat, uh, perhaps. And so for the time being, when people go out of their homes, uh, we want them to wear masks, and we want uh, uh, them to be thorough in observing that, implementing that. Will that be permanent or indefinite? It depends on how well the disease can be controlled going forward. So for the time being, uh, we ask uh, the citizens to continue with their uh, behavior changes. This is uh, from uh, Walter Sim of Straight Times once again. Uh, and uh, it's about uh, 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 the same matter uh, from a different angle, perhaps. Um, uh, the question is, how concerned are you that people will let their guard down when the state of emergency is lifted. For example, South Korea's Golden Week holiday has led to a small but growing nightclub clusters. Thank you very much. Uh, before the declaration, uh, there was a three-day holiday in uh, March, and uh, people uh, actually uh, let their guard down, and that led to uh, uh, increase in infection after that. So uh, based on this reflection, uh, the May Golden Week, uh, uh, during this time, uh, we asked for thorough uh, behavioral change or self-restraint uh, of uh, going out or going to different uh, prefectures or uh, unnecessary travel uh, or uh, returning uh, to uh, their parents. Uh, we've asked uh, people to uh, refrain from doing that. And as a result, uh, uh, during Gold Week, uh, Golden Week, uh, if we look at uh, tourist spots, uh, uh, using uh, mobile phone data, derived data and so forth, uh, near uh, Tokyo uh, in places such as Karuizawa, Compared to Golden Week last week, uh, there was a uh, reduction uh, by 90 percent, uh, redu reduction of people. And in the Mie Prefecture, Issei Shrine, uh, over a 90 percent reduction of people uh, was seen. And this time, uh, we've had uh, tremendous cooperation uh, from the citizens, uh, to, and we were able to generate uh, these uh, results. Uh, Uh, so that people uh, will not uh, let their guard down excessively. Uh, we'd like to continue to monitor. And uh, the new infections uh, tendencies and the spread of uh, infections, uh, we'd like to continue to uh, monitor to respond appropriately. Thank you, uh, Kojima-san. And Kojima -san, in this relation, uh, we have one more question from uh, Walter Sim. Um, I think he wishes to uh, uh, to have more elaboration on the exit strategy. Uh, his question is, could you elaborate on the factors that Japan will look at in devising an exit strategy? The factors uh, in the uh, exit strategy. And uh, in this relation, will this new lifestyle mean the end of businesses, some businesses where avoiding the th three C's is impossible, uh, such as karaoke outlets and izakayas? Thank you for the question. At this moment, on the 4th of May, the Japanese government announced uh, uh, basic uh, policies uh, regarding the novel coronavirus uh, disease control. And uh, it has included a number of uh, ideas with respect to restrictions on the use of facilities. Those designated uh, 13 prefectures under specific uh, caution. Uh, in these prefectures, uh, if the facilities uh, have the risk of uh, spreading infections, uh, the measures need to continue. And restrictions continue to be in place. Uh, for other 34 prefectures, uh, if 
uh, the facilities have not had any cluster infections uh, on the condition that they take uh, necessary uh, controls, uh, uh, their uh, use uh, 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 can be resumed uh, gradually. If uh, the facilities have had uh, clusters uh, and if there's a risk of three Cs, uh, then restrictions uh, uh, are requested uh, to be continued. So uh, economic activities uh, will be resumed gradually as such, and in view of uh, the measures uh, that are necessary uh, to be put in place, uh, we will take uh, gradual steps uh, to resume uh, these uh, activities. So in places where uh, clusters have happened, uh, in facilities where three Cs uh, are a risk, or nightclubs and uh, nighttime restaurants uh, uh, where clusters uh, are prone to happen, then restrictions uh, will have to continue. Uh, otherwise, for other facilities, uh, the restrictions uh, will be relaxed uh, gradually, uh, depending on the prefecture or the region. Okay. Uh, I have another question for uh, the Ministry of Health, uh, Labor and Welfare, actually. And this uh, comes from uh, Motoko Rich of the New York Times. Uh, how can we be sure that the low number of deaths in Japan is not just a matter of many deaths not classified as COVID-19 because you're not testing patients before they, they die? So it's about the testing of patients uh, who have died of some causes. Thank you. Uh, this is the type of question that we get uh, all the time. Basically, those people uh, that die, they uh, die in hospitals, uh, and uh, in hospitals, uh, PCR tests are conducted because uh, insurances are provided and uh, doctors make that decision. And if it's uh, pneumonia, or if we feel that uh, uh, people have severe cases of pneumonia, in Japanese hospitals, uh, there's no hospital in Japan uh, that would not doubt it's uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, so uh, they would probably, they would uh, appropriately uh, move to conduct the uh, tests. And uh, fortunately, in Japan, uh, uh, CT penetration uh, is uh, world's uh, number one in Japan. So uh, if uh, pneumonia is suspected, uh, not uh, only x-rays, but CT scanning is done because there's a high penetration rate. And uh, if uh, you discover a pneumonia uh, due to this, they would uh, move to the next uh, test. I think uh, that's the course. So therefore, If uh, someone uh, dies in a hospital due to uh, pneumonia, uh, there may be uh, exceptional cases, but for most of the cases, uh, I believe that uh, the diagnosis are uh, made appropriately. Thank you, Mrs. Hara. Uh, we have uh, some questions uh, relating to uh, ICT technology, and perhaps uh, we can bundle these uh, two questions. Uh, one is from uh, Ms. Uh, Motoko Rich of New York Times, uh, which is, can you describe your proposals for ICT contact tracing in more detail? And the other question is uh, from Mr. Patrick Welter of Frankfurter uh, Allgemeine Zeitung. Uh, does Japan see a need to develop or introduce a contact, trace, uh, contact tracking application on mobile phones as it is discussed or introduced in Germany, Australia, New Zealand, etc. If yes, which public institution develops such an app and will it be when could it be introduced? And if no, why don't governments see such a need? So maybe uh, I can ask both uh, Mr. Kojima as well as the Minister of uh, Health, uh, Labor and Welfare to uh, to deal with this question. Yes, thank you for the questions. 
or respond. As part of counter-cluster measures utilizing ICT, is something that we need to tackle as uh, government of uh, Japan. On the 4th of May, as part of the Japanese government's basic polities, there's a clear description with respect to uh, the use of ICT. So inclusive of using ICT on contact uh, tracing, uh, uh, we would like to uh, see such technology being promoted. And uh, of course, uh, the whole of the government uh, will uh, address this uh, with uh, the relevant uh, ministries involved and uh, development is now underway uh, for this. Uh, and such apps are being introduced overseas, but uh, we have to consider the implications on privacy protection, personal information protection. So we have to make sure that personal information privacy is adequately protected. That should be the assumption. And this has to be accepted by the general public of this country as well. So that needs to be ensured uh, system-wise. And that is how this needs to be developed. Uh, that's uh, the position of the Japanese government. Over to MHLW. So promotion of measures uh, utilizing ICT, if I may share information on that. At our ministry, what we are pushing for is as follows, information about medical institutions as uh, infections uh, spread. We have to have uh, the healthcare capacity. And uh, in ensuring that, we need to understand the status of each hospital. What is the number of beds in that particular hospital? What is the number of beds uh, that are vacant or available? or what is uh, the status of uh, medical equipment, uh, the medical staff, how they are allocated, and what is the availability of PPEs, uh, what is the status of uh, procurement, outlook on the procurement of uh, PPE and other materials. Uh, by collecting data on a weekly basis, uh, we will be able to uh, establish uh, appropriate healthcare uh, system uh, to meet the needs of the times. Uh, ever since uh, we've had uh, an outbreak of this uh, epidemic, uh, we've been doing this, but it takes a lot of effort. And uh, this uh, work is very complicated. So as we collect the data and disclose the data using ICT, uh, collecting information, uh, on a unified uh, basis and supplying, uh, disclosing information. Uh, we've been doing that already since uh, April. And as far as information is uh, concerned, if there's a patient uh, that's detected, the patient information, how the test is conducted, what are the attributes, uh, their name, their age, uh, their occupation, uh, starting from those basic pieces of information and the test results of that particular person. Or uh, is the person having a severe case or a mild case? In which hospital uh, is the person uh, is? Or uh, is the person at their home? Is the person being treated uh, elsewhere? So patient-related information. Uh, uh, the local government or the local health uh, center or uh, uh, the national government, uh, we need to grasp that information so that we can share the relevant information necessary with respect to the patient. We've been collecting such uh, data uh, to grasp the situation and analyze uh, the situation. And uh, uh, that takes uh, much effort. And so, uh, by utilizing RCT technology, we're trying to unify that uh, uh, data collection effort, consolidate data collection effort, and uh, by promoting this uh, type of initiative, uh, the workload uh, related to uh, disease control, especially at the local government level, they will be able to reduce the workload. So that's our hope, uh, to see this type of technology being used.
Okay, thank you, Mr. Mo. More questions? Oh, yes, Nishimura san. Nishimura, once again. Uh, this is according to recent information in France in uh, December. Uh, there were already uh, those infected which were hospitalized, and it was uh, confirmed uh, recently. And in November, also in November, uh, there are those who lost their sense of taste, and uh, there were those uh, uh, who were hospitalized uh, with uh, influenza-like symptoms. And uh, these people, perhaps, uh, had been infected in uh, November. There is uh, such a possibility, and there are studies uh, to this effect. In Japan, uh, do you have cases uh, where symptoms were unlike the ordinary influenza, the people uh, who have lost their sense of taste? Have you seen this in Japan at an early point in time? And ha is uh, there any uh, research underway concerning this? Question for the Ministry of Health. The case in France is uh, something that uh, we uh, entertain a great interest in. We think that it's deeply interesting, and we want to obtain more information. Uh, using different channels, uh, we are collecting uh, information. and. Uh, As to whether similar developments are seen in other countries, uh, we are in the process of collecting information. And uh, similar research, I think, uh, is called for in Japan. But uh, for the, at the present point in time, we haven't gone that far. Uh, if you ask whether we're doing anything specific, uh, uh, we're not. We are not. And uh, the report from France is something uh, that uh, we uh, have a great interest in. Okay, uh, right. You have a question? Thank you very much. Rocky Swift at Reuters once again. Among Japanese developed drugs to combat the COVID 19, Avagon is the most uh, well known and most popularized. But another drug that I've been hearing about is one called Camastat Mesylate. It's known uh, commercially in Japan as Foipan. Uh, I was wondering if uh, someone from the health ministry can comment on that, whether you've heard any anecdotal evidence of this drug used in hospitals, and uh, if you can uh, perhaps comment why this drug maybe has not gotten as much attention as, as Avigan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rocky san uh can I ask uh, Umeda-san to uh, take that question, please? Hello. Regarding Avigan, earlier, Mr. Sahara explained, and another drug, uh, Ivermectin, it's used uh, for parasite. And Ivermectin is the name uh, that is used in Japan, as you know. Uh, Dr. Omura, who is a Nobel laureate, was involved in developing this uh, drug, so it's well known. And the efficacy of the drug was confirmed and reported and we are aware of that. Going forward, regarding ivermectin, at Kitazato University, a doctor-led uh, trial is being uh, planned. So efficacy uh, will be confirmed once again in that trial. from what we're told. So, Avigan or Ivermectin, the drugs developed in Japan 
uh, these new drugs that are potentially effective uh, for COVID-19. And so we would like to verify that these exist some of these existing drugs are effective. And if they can possibly be used uh, for treatment, uh, we would like to continue with the developments. I believe the question concerned uh, Nafamostat. Uh, uh, Nafamostat. I believe that's the, what the question was about. Kamostat no. Kamostat ka. Please use the microphone. I don't have the details on that, so I'd like to provide you with details later. A question, actually, for, uh, from uh, Isabel Reynolds of Bloomberg, uh, which is, in particular, when will foreign residents of Japan be able to return, leave and return uh, again? Uh, I think I'll take that question myself, and uh, I think uh, the answer would be rather similar to uh, what I uh, said earlier. Um, it would depend uh, uh, where that person uh, uh, wishes uh, to travel to uh, and forth. Uh, it will depend on the situation in that particular country. Uh, it will also depend on how things are in Japan as well. Uh, and uh, to uh, and uh, the availability of of, of, of flights uh, can can also be relevant as well. Uh, it's difficult to say uh, 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 in general uh, how things will change in the near future. Uh, but uh, it, but as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, the government, including the foreign ministry, is looking into. Uh, how the uh, travel advisory and other uh, restriction on restrictions on on, on travel uh, should be uh, should be uh, evolved uh, in response to uh, what is happening in Japan as well as what is happening around the world uh, regarding uh, the uh, COVID-19. Uh, so, it's, in a nutshell, it's, it's, give, it's at this point in time, it's difficult to give you. Uh, a, a, a concrete uh, answer on when, uh, but uh, we will be looking into it. So, uh, if there are no questions, uh, I believe there are no more questions coming from the online viewers. Oh, but we do have Mr. Sahara who wishes to uh, to uh, make some remarks. Kamasa, uh, that was asked about. Uh, ono Pharmaceutical developed uh, this drug. At University of Tokyo, using cell line in vitro testing is being uh, conducted. Uh, is it effective on humans? That is yet to be found. Uh, more research is necessary. That's where we are right now. So I think uh, our uh, conference, our meeting, is uh, drawing uh, nearer to uh, to a close. And uh, uh, I have uh, I have uh, addressed all the questions uh, from the floor as well as uh, online. And if there are no further questions, uh, uh, I think it's about it's uh, it's time to uh, conclude. Uh, this conference. Uh, before I do that, uh, um, I do realize that uh, some of the questions were very complicated, and uh, we we hope that we've been able to uh, uh, give you uh, the answers that are clear enough. Uh, but if not, uh, do not hesitate to uh, contact us through the uh, foreign press uh, division in our foreign ministry, and uh, we can uh, answer the questions uh, one by one uh, on a one by one basis as well. 
Uh, but in any case, uh, we hope to see you again in the near future. We will be conducting this uh, periodic uh, uh, press conference uh, from time to time. And uh, uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you so much.